Don't forget to like, comment, share and subscribe and do consider supporting the channel via PayPal or Patreon. You'll find the links in the video description. I'm going to tell you about the final day of the World Rapid Play Championship. Really dramatic conclusion. It ended in a four-way tie for first. Four players with nine and a half out of 13. Fabiano Caruana, Magnus Carlsen, Jan Nipomnishi, and Nodibek Abdusatorov from Uzbekistan. That name might be unfamiliar to you. He's just 17 years old, but he's been around the circuit for a few years. He's, he's a real chess prodigy. Became a grandmaster at the age of 13. Uh, I've, I've met him on a few occasions and he's very, uh, seems very mature to me. Uh, very pleasant to talk to. Um, he's very composed, I have to say. And you can see that in his play. And before we go on to uh, discuss the, the, the tie break, um, I want to, to show you a couple of snippets of his games. So this was absolutely crucial. So this was played in round 10. So the first game of uh, the final day. And Abdusatorov had white against Carlsen. Now, Carlsen was a half point clear of the field. It was a very tight game. Carlsen was, was better in some stages, but Abdusatorov was really gritty. As I said, he's very composed and, and technically very, very good. And here Carlsen played f5, which is quite a risky move. And I wonder whether he thought he was still better in this position. If he wants to draw, he could just play queen takes pawn. And after this, well, the position is going to burn out to a draw. But with f5, I wonder whether Carlsen was thinking he still had winning chances. Maybe he thought, well, beautifully centralised knight. White's king's a little bit exposed. Carlsen's king looks pretty good pressing this pawn. But of course, white has a serious trump in that past rook's pawn. But still, I can imagine... I mean, listen, maybe Carlsen just didn't see queen takes h5. But I have a funny feeling he thought he could just chance his arm a bit here because the queen and knight can be very dangerous attacking the king. But this was nice play, king f1. And that king slipped away to h3 and now it's much more secure and suddenly that h-pawn looks very dangerous, supported by the bishop. So Carlson played knight g5 check. Obviously that forces the exchange of bishop for knight. But now that rook's pawn is, well, <laughs> it's still very, very dangerous. And after this move, queen g7, well, it's really tricky because white just needs two more moves and that pawn is rolling through. Now, this was a very long game. So I'm just going to zip through these, these next moves. But you can see that, well, basically with the Sword of Damocles hanging over Carlson's head, that pawn about to queen, this is very difficult to defend. Um, you know, when you run this through a computer, it still thinks that Carlson is drawing this position. Although there were a few blips along the way with... Uh, apparently forced wins for white in sort of 27 moves or something. But basically, it's still drawn. But, well, we've seen this very often in uh, Carlson's games, uh, that he manages to force wins out of supposedly drawn positions. And Abdu Satorov does exactly the same thing here. He just keeps going. Um, he's brought the, the king round here, so he's looking for shelter behind that pawn. Uh, at the moment, Carlsen can keep checking away. But now it's getting very tricky because the checks have run out, or the decent checks have run out, and so Carlsen put the queen on h8. So the computer still thinks it's a draw, but it's getting very tricky now. Uh, well, the computer thinks that queen g6 here is mate in 70. 
well, fine. <laughs> I mean, it's completely irrelevant in a rapid play game where, um, you know, they're down to their final seconds, basically. And bringing the king a little bit closer to the king introduces some interesting ideas. Carlson played b4. Somehow getting rid of that pawn makes it much easier to check. But look what happened. Um, after king a1, that's the wrong square, king a3 still holds on for, for black. Uh, although it should be lost, but anyway, this one is definitely lost. And that was the end of the game. Obviously, that forces a queen exchange, and then the pawn goes through. Those kind of queen and pawn in games, I, mean, I know from my own experience, incredibly difficult to defend when there's a pawn on h7. Because, you know, every single move, you have to watch out for numerous checks. Um, so many tricks, and yeah, eventually... Carlson fell for one. Um, yeah, we've seen Carlson do it to his opponents so often, and this time the boot was on the other foot. So with that uh, victory, with Carlson losing, that just opened up the tournament. Um, and yeah, it, it, it really was a wide open contest. Um, I, I just want to show you another bit of Abdu Sator of skill. He was really tenacious in his games. Um, he managed to hold a couple of end games where he was really struggling, uh, but not just end games. I mean, he's incredibly resourceful. So, just check this one out. So, Abdus Satorov has black against Gukesh, one of the many Indian stars. Um, Gukesh is two pieces up. There's a threat of mating one. But Abdu Satorov managed to find an incredible way to hold this position. I mean, this is absolutely brilliant. Remember, you're short of time and you've got to hold this one. How do you do it? You can always pause the video if you want to check it out. Rookie five check is the first move. Now, if knight takes, then queen d2. That's not desirable for white. So bishop e2, and now rook takes e2 check. And once again, if the rook is taken, it's mate in a couple of moves. So king f1, rook takes pawn check, king g1. And now if the rook keeps checking, the king hides in the corner. There is still a threat of mate here. And after this... And knight d4, this is actually highly unpleasant for black. But incredibly, in this position, Abdus Satorov found a way to draw. Queen g7 check. So if the king steps aside, then queen g2 mate. So king takes rook. And now this is a forced draw. Like this. It's perpetual check. And queen check. If the king steps this way then the knight can be taken and yeah basically it's it's still going to be a draw so basically the king has to keep shuffling and that is a draw what an incredible save so this guy is tenacious basically um and he managed to get to nine and a half points so as i said four players on nine and a half now this is where for me, there was a bit of a scandal. Well, I don't know about a, about a bit of a scandal. Um, so four players on nine and a half. Now, in the, the tiebreak rules, only two players would contest the tiebreak. I mean, I find that absolutely ridiculous. You know, if you've got f four players, we've got three players, you've got five players, everyone who's tied first should take part in the tiebreak. No matter how you arrange it, whether it's some kind of all-play-all all blitz, um, or whether if there are four of you like here, you could have two semi-finals and a final, but everyone should have a chance. But instead, they, first of all, they eliminated two players on Buchholz, 
adding up the scores of their opponents. Um, and basically, Carlson and Caruana were eliminated just uh, by mathematics alone. So that left Nodibek, Abdusatorov, and Yan Nipomnishi with the best Buchholz. So they contested two blitz games. Now, the first game was drawn. Uh, Abdul Satorov again fought brilliantly and came back uh, and held a very difficult position. And then they went into the second blitz game. So Abdul Satorov with white and Yanni Pomnishi with black. Well, we've already seen that Nepo has had a great tournament. Uh, I published a video uh, of his with with an absolutely splendid victory over over Duda, um, so you know he's a class rapid play player, so not an easy one for the seventeen year old, um, and you know Nepo certainly the favourite going into this tie break, but anyway first game drawn this is the second game, so it's an English uh, this kind of setup uh, with this pawn structure favoured by Carlsen, among others. So it gives a, a quite a closed position. So here, black wants to play bishop g4 and exchange off, whoops, exchange off that knight. So h3. You don't have to play like that. But, um, yeah, reasonable. a5, that's sort of, con it's about controlling these squares, basically. Let me. This is quite a long game, so I'm going to zip through these moves. Uh, so the bishop drops back to c5, giving some control over d4. And of course, having played a5, b4 square is under control, but also it means that after knight a4, the bishop can drop back to a7. And bishop e3, so typical for these kind of positions. White wants to contest the d4 square and after the exchange, then the pawn takes its place and covers d4. So now there's a semi-open uh, f file. I mean, both sides can be reasonably happy here, quite a closed position. It's hard for white to make serious inroads on the king side because black is so solid there, actually. And Black does have the chance, perhaps, to break in the middle with d5. Nevertheless, there is a little bit of pressure here. Uh, so that knight is eliminated, no surprise there. Pawn takes is possible, but Abdus Satorov went for rook takes f5 and doubled on the f file. Well, there's no real threat here. I mean, possibly the bishop can come to h5, but it's nothing too serious. Um, but Nepo decided to exchange queens, so they've got an end game, and I would say it's a little bit more comfortable for white, but still should be okay for black. I was anticipating g6 and king g7 here, seems reasonable, but uh, Nepo decided just to bring that knight back into the game very quickly. But that did allow this bishop to come to g4 and and in combination with the pawn on h4, then it means the bishop can always retreat here if necessary. So that bishop has found a really nice diagonal. So around about this stage, um, looking pretty good for Abdul Satorov actually. Certainly uh, a very comfortable position. And this knight now threatened to come in here, hitting the rook, and then of course that could be taken. So. This is, yeah, uncomfortable for black now. Therefore, f6, but that's not such a joyous move to have to make because that certainly weakens all these light squares and that's a very pleasant sight for that bishop on g4. Looking through those uh, light squares here. d4, yep, bit of pressure. Those rooks would like to switch over and, and perhaps get down the open d-file, rook d2, and, and now, yeah, a very simple plan for white, as I said, just doubling on the d-file and threatening to come in. Therefore, Nepo decides, okay, 
I've got to try and complicate it. Here, actually, knight b6 is a very strong move with, with the idea of, well, obviously attacking the rook, but, but looking to, to hop into d7, it's actually quite unpleasant. But anyway, um, Abdus Sotorov playing very, very quickly. Remember, it's a blitz game. Three minutes for both players, plus two seconds increment. But there's no time to kind of hang around in these, in these with, with uh, you know, so, so, such a time control. You know, you just don't ha have time to think things through. It's, it's better to play a move which looks sound. And uh, Abdus Satorov is playing very sound moves. You know, he's, he's really well coordinated here. That's, that's important. And now he just hopped back with knight c3. Obviously couldn't see a way through there. And then he played h5. So that just ensures that he's controlling these uh, these light squares. You know, that, that pawn here rather cramps. Well, certainly two pawns. You could, you could argue all three as well to some extent. An exchange, but I mean, there's no doubt that white is still better in this position. Nepo is still with black, having to be very careful here um, because there is pressure and these pawns are potentially quite weak. And also, the king is not that secure. And I think that this next move emphasizes that. Hits the rook and prepares to attack the, the king from this diagonal. And that is that's very unpleasant to face. If the king goes back, then white could exchange here and then maybe just put the bishop on e6. Uh, how does that king feel? Not that comfortable, I would say. And of course, if black plays like this, then that looks pretty good. There you go. Those light squares, very weak indeed. So, but after bishop c4 check, Nepo played d5. But there's a tactical problem with this move. There are pins all over the place. Here, here as well. So the bishop can't be taken. And now pawn takes, and now e4 just ramps up the pressure on that pawn. Again, there's, there's a terrible pin here. So basically, Abdus Satorov is now winning a pawn. But Nepo exchanges down into a rook and pawn endgame. I mean, they were playing with very little time now. Um, but it's incredible how sort of both players managed to sort of hold their hold their form in a way. Nepo, yes, he's a pawn down. It's not a good position. But he didn't collapse here. And this is an interesting move. D6. So... I think if, if white hangs around, there there is danger that black will just be able to blockade here. So pushing the pawn on, you know, it's a very committal move, but probably a, a good idea, a, a very practical move. Now, if that's taken, then rook takes pawn, uh, certainly white has winning chances. You know, white has an easy plan of pushing the pawns, but uh, the problem is, of course, the rook will go behind it's hard to say whether that's a definite win or a draw. But certainly white can make progress. So Nepo decided just to play a4, sort of keeping tension actually in the position, but allowing the pawn to d7 is obviously uh, on a knife edge now for black. And this looks very good for white. And the rook comes down, and now rook f7. Wow. Okay, so it's really turned in white's favour. So the rooks hold the pawn here and also attack the pawn here. King f4, and now, well, as I said, the position is probably lost. Uh, but that is an absolute disaster because after this, well, it's mating two. What's the mating two? Can you spot it? Check and mate but with just seconds on the clock Abdus Satorov advanced the king here rook takes b2 uh, and now there's another mate 
can you spot it? White to play and mate in two. Rook check. Pawn takes and rook h7 mate. Or king h4, rook e4 mate. But no, Abdusatorov have played rook g8, threatening to advance. Rook d2. Once again, rook g5 would force mate. So this is a kind of comedy of errors, but it was so exciting. Uh, instead, Abdusatorov have played rook e1, threatening to check mate on the h-file. And this is desperate. But... Nepo finds a way to hold on, because if the king steps forward, of course, the rook takes with check. And it looks like it was going to be a draw. In fact, Nepo, if Nepo plays the right rook move here, he might still be OK. Well, he is OK if black finds this and then finds rook check to exchange off. And actually, black is all right here. That's going to be a draw. After this, for example, well, it just trades down, but it'll be a draw. But instead, Nepo played the wrong rook. And now, this is really nice technique from Abdus Satorov. Okay, let's just forget that he missed a few mates in two. But this idea of bringing the king back, hiding behind the pawn, and then getting going is uh, is very nice indeed. So if rook takes pawn, then rook check and g3 check wins a rook. Uh, so uh, Nepo played rook d5, but of course that didn't alter anything after d8, rook check and g3. And that was the final move of the game. Here Nepo resigned. King has no squares, and so black has to give up a rook, and of course, that's an easy win. So, Nodiabek Abdusatorov from, Az from Uzbekistan, not Azerbaijan, from Uzbekistan, just 17 years old, is the world rapid play champion. The youngest ever world rapid champion. Uh, what a fantastic achievement! He has shown great form over uh, the past, well, past few years, actually. But you might recall that in the World Cup in 2021, last summer, he had a pretty good run. And he upset Anish Giri. He knocked Anish Giri out in one of the rounds. So, uh, you know, it shows not just in rapid. I mean, he's obviously incredibly gifted. Uh, to rapid play um, but in classical chess he's a class act as well uh, his technique is superb and you know he's obviously got great character as well very very composed at the board so well many congratulations to him Nepo almost did it almost got a world title but he fell at the last I'm sure he'll be disappointed but it is still some consolation for him after um, the, the world championship match so we now have the World Blitz Championship coming up over the next couple of days. So watch out for that. I'll be reporting on that very soon. Thanks for watching.